All right, so here I have a K92 dog dryer. Uh, if you're in the grooming business and own a K9 dryer, then you're probably aware of the brushes or have run across the issue of having to change brushes out on the motors once they wear down. If you're new to the K9 models, then each motor has carbon brushes in them. Once they wear down, the, you might get a burning smell coming out of the machine or the motor will quit running completely. It's kind of a telltale sign that your brushes are gone. Uh, in this video, I'm gonna go through, teach you how to tear the machine apart. Unfortunately, with these K92s, you do have to tear the machine apart to get that back motor to change the brushes on. So hopefully this video will help. Uh, I know it is, does get expensive to send these machines in to have it done, so if you are capable of doing this at home on your own, you could save yourself quite a bit of money. So the tools I have here are basically what you'll need to make this job as easy as possible. You don't necessarily need all these tools. But like I said, to make it as easy as possible, this is what you're going to need. Uh, some duct tape, a drill, a heat gun, a Phillips bit, a square number 2 bit, a 5 16 wrench, uh, an assortment of flathead screwdrivers, some smaller ones and larger ones, possibly a Phillips screwdriver depending on some of the screws in there, a 9 16 wrench, uh, you're going to need a vice grips, and you're gonna need a scotch bright pad, some pry bars, a hammer, some Dawn dish soap, and uh, you also will need a shop bag. Like I said, once I get in, tearing into this, you'll kind of see where all these tools come into play and we'll get started on this. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is just simply teach you how to uh, check the brushes on this end. So like I said, if you are a dog groomer, you're running this machine all day long, five, six days a week, then probably every 10 months to a year, you're gonna be replacing brushes on this. And if you run these brushes down too far, there is a little metal piece that holds this carbon on. It'll start rubbing against the armature of the motor. That's where you get the hot burning smell, which you don't want. That possibly could ruin the armature too. So it is critical to change these brushes out with a little bit of life left on them. You don't wanna run them down too far. So the first thing I'm going to do is pop this end cap off just before you need your number two square bit. These end caps do like the stick gun sometimes, so just a flathead screwdriver. Kind of lightly tap it off. Once you get it off too, you want to check your gasket on there. This seals up to make sure no air leaks out of this end cap. If this gasket's in pretty rough shape, if you can run your finger over it and it starts to crumble, you're going to want to replace that out. They're basically just glued in, so you have to scrape it out and get a new one and glue it back in. Then on this side, uh, the exhaust side, you'll be able to see the motors facing towards you, so the brushes are there. Uh, we're going to pop this brush off and check the life on it. So you'll need the little screwdriver and a hammer. The proper way to do this is get your screwdriver behind this little brass tab and just kind of lightly tap it out until it pops out. And then this is where you'll need your Phillips bit. There's two little screws here that kind of strap that brush in, take both those out. That strap will come right off. That brush will pop right out. If you take this strap out first and try to take this little tab out second, more than likely you're gonna break that tab off unless you're good at soldering or you'll have to call in and order a new one to replace it so a lot of people do that so make sure you pop that tab out first take the uh, strap off second as you can see this brush is really worn down this is what you don't want because any more and then like I said that little metal piece will start rubbing on the armature and that's where you could possibly ruin it so you don't want to let them go any farther than this Pause. all right so now we've established that the brush need to be changed on this motor like I said this is the front motor pretty much worn down to nothing more than likely, the back motor will be in roughly the same shape as this front motor. So now I'm going to go through, we'll show you how to tear this machine completely apart so we can get to that back motor also. Start by getting this other cap off. Yeah, 
just kind of tap that off. This other cap, there is a gasket in there too, same as the exhaust cap, just make sure that gasket's in good shape and sealing everything up so no, on this side, no fur or dust can get sucked in through the cap there. So, I'll tilt it up. First thing we'll do is cut the zip tie off. flathead screwdriver you gotta take the ground wires off just a little screw and nut that hold that on let's get that off then a 9 16 wrench if you have a deep well socket that works a lot better than a wrench but just a 9 16 set. I'll get these little hex nuts off for the switches. And this switch guard will pop right off also. All right, those switches should just pull right out. You're gonna have to take the screws out. That just little screws in there that hold the wires on. If you need to, just kind of write down where each wire goes, or you can mark the wires also. Screw that hold, uh, holds the white wires, neutral wires, into the outlet. That'll come out. Same with the other switch, two little screws. You really want to be careful not to drop these screws into the motor because if you do that and they fall into that motor pan, it is kind of a pain in the butt to get those out. Alright, this outlet, there's two little metal pieces on the back here. You just kind of squeeze those together and that'll pop right out. And then there's two motor stops in here that hold the motor from coming back. That'll be a square bit also. Those just come right out. And the last thing will be the cord. Unwrap that. Where the heat gun will come into play. Uh, there's a rubber grommet that kind of pokes through the cord hole there. You want to heat that grommet up and then that will pull right out. So. Just kind of twist the back uh, cord back and forth so that way it kind of heats the whole grommet up and you don't end up melting it. It doesn't take a whole lot to heat it up. should just pull right out. That's that grommet I was talking about. That's pretty much everything on that side. We'll flip it back over. There's two motor stops in here on this other side that also need to be taken out.
flip it back over. This is where the vice grips will come in. You want to attach the vice grips to this hex nut on the bottom side of the motor. You want to get a good tight grip on there because you're going to be prying on it a little bit. All right, once that latches on, this is one where you want your thicker flathead screwdriver. So the easiest way to get this motor out is this hole where the cord was in. I'll set it down on the ground here. I'll put one foot on one of the legs, grab onto the vice grips, put the screwdriver through. It's gonna come through the vice grips there. And then you're gonna pry down, you're gonna push down on the screwdriver while pulling up with the vice grips. And that motor should pop right out. And then we'll flip it over, this other motor. These are the two pry bars come in handy. You don't need these. You can just work it back and forth with your hand to get it out. But like I said, the two pry bars, just kind of get your pry bars under each metal little piece there and it pops right up like that. So there's basically how you disassemble this machine right down to nothing. Uh, around those motors, there are two gaskets on each motor also. You want to check those gaskets. Same thing as the cover gaskets, if you can run your hand over them and they're starting to get hard and brittle and crumbling or they just look like they're not holding the motor very well, then you're gonna to wanna to replace those out because they do, they are pretty important from stopping air from blowing back and losing power. They keep the air going forward and then they also hold those motors in place. So they are pretty important. Okay. All right, now that we've got both motors out, we popped that brush out earlier on this one. So we'll take the other three brushes out on these. The little flathead screwdriver again. Same thing as before, just take it, pop that little tab back, do it on all of them. Once those tabs are back, then take the strap off. Straps. Those brushes should come right out. As you can see, they're all pretty worn down. Uh, this one is a good example here. You don't want to let the brush go any farther than that. That's about all the farther I'd want the brush to go before I change them out. So. Good thing to remember there. The other thing you're gonna wanna do while the brushes are off, you're gonna wanna inspect the armatures. The armatures on both these motors look really good. Uh, what you'll notice on these is you replace the brushes many times. There'll be kind of a groove there where the brush sits. That'll start to groove out. And once they groove out quite a bit, these panels, you'll notice little spaces in between those panels. If those spaces get really wide, then that'll be time to replace the armature. Uh, like I said, if you're a groomer that runs these every day, what I've been seeing is about four years is the maximum life on these motors before you'll have to replace them. Uh, like I said, these look really good. Normally when you take these brushes off, there's going to be a whole bunch of uh, carbon buildup on these. So this is where this uh, scotch Bright pad is going to come in. The easiest way to clean these armatures, because you want to clean them up before you put the new brushes in, is with the shop vec. You're going to want to take the hose, flip the motor on its side. 
We'll flip the shot back on, put the hose over the bottom like that. That'll get that armature spinning really quick. And while it's spinning, just kind of take that and kind of push it up against it. That'll clean it up pretty well. As you can see now, we got these armatures all cleaned up and shiny. Like I said, the armatures look really good on these yet. So then we'll just put the new brushes back in. Four new brushes. Before you put them in, you want to look them over and make sure they're not cracked or chipping or anything like that. Uh, if they are cracked, that could lead into them breaking eventually. So just look them over before you install them. On the bottom of the brush, there's a little tab right there. That tab has to sit in that groove on the motor. I've seen a lot of people where the tab will be outside, and then that'll lead to your brush not lasting as long because it's not in where it needs to be. Or that tab will be sitting on the groove itself, and then the brush will be sitting at an angle. Uh, if it does that, the brush will wear unevenly and has a chance to break kind of midway through. So it's important to get that tab in that groove. They just kind of, then this tab will slide on top of that brass piece and underneath the orange plastic part. And then that just pops into that groove like that. Same with the other one. Don't worry about inserting these tabs until we get those straps back on. Make sure it's in that groove. Alright. They should just sit in there and this is where we'll put the strap back on. All right, once you get those straps on, then this is when you're gonna to wanna to take your little screwdriver again and kind of get behind those and just gently work them back into where they need to be. You guys at home, if you have the capability, I always like to test them before I put the motors back in the body because you hate to get the machine back together, go to flip it on and all of a sudden something might be wrong with it or something else wrong with the motor. So I always like to test them, make sure they're running good. Uh, like I said, if the armature is grooved out, which you'll notice on there, you want to make sure the new brushes fit inside that groove. If they're riding up on the top where it isn't grooved out, it's going to force those uh, brushes to chip. So, one thing to look for. In order to test it, I just got some cables hooked up to a cord here. So, the way to do that... Clip these on. If 
you are going to do this, you want to make sure you got a good hold on that motor because as soon as you plug this in, the motor is really going to jump quite a bit. So just have a good hand on it. What you want to look for is that brushes aren't arcing too bad. If there's a really bright blue arc, that means it's there's something wrong with the brush or something else is going on with the armature. And just want to make sure it's running smoothly. So we'll check that real quick. You don't have to run it a whole lot. That one's running good. We'll do the same thing with this other one real quick. As you notice on that one, there's a really blue arc on there. Uh, what I would do normally when I'm doing repairs is I'll let that run for a little bit longer. Sometimes that will go away. If it doesn't, then what will happen is you'll notice your machine running a lot hotter and stuff like that. So I'm not sure what causes the arcing. It could be a bad brush. It could be something with the armature being bad but that's always something to look for too. So. Okay, before we get this machine back together, uh, so far this video has been very helpful. If you've learned a lot, uh, please subscribe to the channel. Help me grow it a little bit. If you know any other groomers out there that have a canine model, uh, tell them to check it out too. I will be going through other models like the Fluffer Mini K93, kind of explain how to tear all those apart and what to look for and stuff like that on those. So please subscribe and help me out a lot. I appreciate it. All right, so we'll get to getting this back together. Before we throw the motors back in, this would be a good time to clean the inside out. Uh, a lot of these do collect a lot of dust and fur that does make it to the filters. So just take your shot back, clean the inside out, take a rake to the inside. If the outside's dirty some Windex and rig, wipe it down, get it cleaned back up. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do, we'll do the switch side, outlet side, that'll go down. Then you'll take your motor with the red jumper wires. You wanna make sure if the duct tape's kinda crappy, you re-duct tape it, it just kinda keeps the motors from rubbing on the motor, or the wires from rubbing on the motor, and they keep them in place while you go to stuff the motor. And this is where the Dawn dish soap, you're going to want one that has the foaming action that really kind of helps out. So just go through, get some on that gasket, just like that. This motor goes in really easy. So if the handle, if you look at it like a clock, if the handle's 12, the bottom is 6 o'clock, you're going to want to put the wires in. The wire's in at about 12 o'clock. If there's any motor stops there, you just want to have them to the either side of the motor stop so that way they don't have a chance to rub on those and short out. So just kind of put those through. And then this motor goes in really easy. Just kind of push in with your hand until it gets down to those motor stops. You don't want to push too hard and bend those motor stops. So once you feel it kind of touch those, you stop. And we'll flip it back over. We'll grab those wires, pull them up through, and we'll do the same with this. Take the dish soap, get that gasket good. And here you kind of see that gasket start to peel away a little bit. Uh, if you go to stuff your motor and leave that like that, this motor goes in upside down, so it's going to catch that gasket and just continue to rip it out. So what I like to do, just get a little dish soap on it. And then I will take some duct tape, kind of rip a piece off, kind of cover it up where it's starting to peel back. Take some more dish soap, get on the duct tape. Alright, bring this one down. 
pull your wires up, kind of hold them at that 12 o'clock, and then this motor goes in upside down. So the brushes go down, pan up, and we'll kind of put the wires towards the same spot. So they're right next to those red ones. And this is where at the factory, they kind of have a tool that you can pop it in real quick. It works really nice. Unfortunately, I do not have one of those tools, so I'll just be using my hand. You want to kind of you can use your fingers, watch out, because this pan is really sharp. You'll cut yourself, you uh, push too hard, but kind of get one side started. Once you get that other side started, kind of get the other, work it in. That should just kind of pop back in. Just kind of all the way put pressure on the outside if you put a lot of pressure in the middle you're going to push that pan down and it's going to push against those fins and you'll notice a grinding so just kind of keep working that down just kind of go down until you feel it hit those motor stops in there like i said same as the other side you don't want to push it through those motor stops so that's good and then once that's in you can kind of grab that duct tape work it out that'll keep that gasket from folding down if you do get it in and you notice that gasket's kind of folded down, you want to take those vice grips, pull that motor out, and find a way to either re-glue that gasket or do some more duct tape to try and keep it in spot. Because if that gasket does roll, that could affect it a little bit. So that's one thing to look out for. Now that we got the motors in, the next thing will be to get the motor stops back in. So you got your two motor stops on this side. So I go to those are tight. Then flip it over, do the motor stops on the other side. That's just the little square headed screws that hold those in. All right, then we'll take our exhaust cap. We'll pop that back on on this side. The exhaust cap goes on the opposite end of where the switches are. Some people get those backwards and they wonder why the uh, machine is sucking in and not blowing. So just make sure that exhaust cap's on the opposite side of the switches. And three little square headed screws that hold that on. Uh, if you do notice that these screws aren't holding very well, sometimes it does strip those holes out. You can always buy a size bigger screw and then that'll hold in a lot better than these little ones too. All right, now we got that cap on, we can flip it back up. We got all our wires here, and we can start reassembling everything on the inside. So the first thing we're going to do is take one of the switches and then one of those gold screws. This front switch will grab one of the red wires. It doesn't matter which one. Uh, if one is shorter than the other one, I just usually use the shorter one on this switch. And that'll go, you got the two terminals here, you got one on the side, and then one on the front. This will connect to the front one. Once you got that front one on, kind of grab your wires, kind of go underneath, and then that'll go in that front switch hole. Then I'll take our guard here. That'll go on also, washer, 
hex nut. And I'll just kind of get that started. I won't go tight with it yet. Next thing will be the outlet. That'll pop in. Your ground wire will be facing you. The red wire will be on the back side. So that just kind of pops right back into that hole. Then you'll have this other short jumper wire. So take one of your other gold screws that go on that switches. You'll take the short red wire off the outlet. You'll connect it to the other short jumper wire. Just kind of pinch those together. That screw should stay in there. Just be careful. All right, go down tight with that. Then we'll grab our other switch, another gold screw. None of the two black wires, same thing. It doesn't matter which one you grab right away. If there's one that's shorter than the other, I usually go with the shorter one. That'll go to the front one, front terminal of this switch. I'll just kind of loop that under those, kind of back up through. You got your washer. Hex nut. Once you get both those switches up too, that's where you can go ahead and tighten those down. They don't have to be super tight, just get them snug. Once we get to this point, it'll be time to get our power cord back in. This is where you'll need your heat gun again, so you can feed those back to that hole. Get it down to the ground, it's just about there. And just start heating up. Once you get that rubber soft, that'll pull right back in there, just like that. All right, that'll leave us to this point. We'll take our black from the power cord, another gold screw, and then the short red one. We'll connect to the black and that'll go to the side terminal. Drop that again. Push that out. Just kind of hold them there. Keep that tight. All right, we'll grab our last screw here, the white from the power cord. We'll connect to the other two motor wires, the other red and black one that are there. And then that will go to your outlet. Out of the five gold screws, this one's usually silver, sometimes it's gold also, but this one is a little bit longer than the other ones. So you wanna make sure you save that one for this. If you try using one of these shorter ones from the switches, it's gonna be a hard time getting it back into there. It's tight. Last thing will be to grab the green grounds. Have your little bolt that goes through the top up there. Put 
connect your grounds to it. Your little hex nut. This is where the little 5 16 wrench comes in. Last but not least, you're gonna to want to take a zip tie. Just kind of run your zip tie through, get all your wires, keep them from getting sucked into that fin. Just kind of pull them tight, make sure they're up tight like that. It should be good. And there it's back together. So the last thing to do would be to test it out. As you're testing it out, you just kind of want to feel around here too. Make sure that gasket is sealing up. If you're losing air out of there, you're going to lose some power. But everything on this looks good, so the last thing I need to do will be to pop this end cap back on. That's pretty much all it's to it. Uh, one other note, there's a filter that goes on the end of there. Always keep an eye on that filter, keep that clean. At the end of the day, always clean all the dog fur off of it. Those filters are kind of cheap, so look for holes because fur will get sucked through there. And when you tear into these, you will notice a lot of fur and dust getting in there. So just make sure those filters are on and clean. But yeah, it's basically how you tear apart a K92 and switch the brushes out and get it back together. So.